Hello everyone, my name is Ninten110 and today I'm going to be showing you how to program pet toy robots using the pet toy skill composer. If you're using a original Bittle model or Nibble, you will need to use the USB adapter. Make sure to plug it in upright and make sure that all of the pins go into their slots. You will also need to grab a micro USB cable and plug it into the micro USB slot on the USB adapter. It looks like this. Make sure it snaps in tightly. And then of course plug that into your computer. If you are using a Bittle X model, that being the newest model of Bittle, you will need to use a USB-C cable which plugs in directly to the board, right here. It's also important to make sure you have your battery charged for Biddle, and make sure to plug it in, and go ahead and turn your robot on if you're ready to start programming. Make sure it's all safely plugged into the computer, and also make sure that the lights are on on the back on the board. Now, before you can start programming your robot, you will need to download a particular set of drivers to get your computer to recognize your robot. You will also need to update the firmware to make sure it's all up to date. For the original Biddle and for Nibble, you will go to the Pet Toy Dock Center and download this one, right here. For the Bittle X model, you will need to download this one, right here. Make sure and go ahead and update your robot as well, which you can do by accessing the Pet Toy Desktop app, choosing your model, in this case it's a Bittle X, and then using the firmware uploader, which is very simple and self-explanatory. But since this video is about using the skill composer, let's head right on into that. Voila! Once the skill composer has opened, go ahead and click on the preset posture for balance to make your robot stand up. Make sure to click the little symbol under set to make that your first frame of movement, and then click add to start your second frame. Now you're able to start making your robot move. You can move the levers up and down to move each servo. You can do them one at a time, or you can actually do multiple simultaneously. I highly recommend not moving these too quickly because it can cause your robot to fall over, or it can cause servo damage. Right now we're just moving them individually, as you can see. If you would like to move more than one joint at once, you can click on the plus and minus to add or subtract the ones that you want to use. So let's say, for example, I want to do both back legs. And then you can drag the levers up and down and it will move both forward and backwards. For the second frame, let's do a quick sitting posture, just by moving both back legs forward a little bit. It may take a little while to perfect your motions, but don't rush it. Now I got the sitting perfect. I would like to save this as the second frame, so I'll go over to this exclamation mark under set and I'll click it. That sets it as the second frame. And then I want to go and add another frame to start on the third frame. So I will click the arrow under add. For the third frame, let's raise the arm up a little bit. What we're going to be making is a simple waving animation, just something to start off with. Let's get it at a good angle. That seems like a good angle to start with. And then let's go to the next frame. Let's move just the knee forward a little bit, and then save that frame, 
And then let's move the knee back. Or I guess you could call that the elbow. And we're going to continue moving it forward and backwards and adding those as frames. And then we're going to put the arm back down and make sure that it lines up with the other arm. Okay, let's test and see what we've got so far. Looks pretty good, right? Alright, now we need to get him to stand back up. See, if you try to go immediately from sitting to standing, you can have some pretty unintended consequences. So we're going to need to make a smooth stand up. Let's try this, just moving the back legs out. Let's see how that works. Alright, I'm going to play the animation. Ooh, okay, let's not do that. Let's fix this. If you would like for your biddle to jump back up after sitting, that works. Let's try that. We're gonna mess around a little bit with the front arms and the back knees. Let's see if we can get it perfect this time. And now your biddle just leaps right back up. And then of course you want to add stand as the last frame of movement. At least in this case. So now let's, let's give it a try and see how that looks. I'm going to press play. There we go. Alright, now that you're done creating your animation, you're going to want to save it. So you're going to click on export, and you're going to type in a name for it. Name it whatever you think works, whatever you think sounds cool. I'm just going to call this one uh, test skill, and of course you're going to save it. You better will perform it in slow motion. And now it's saved to your computer. And now you're ready to just go ahead and unplug everything and close up the Pet Toy Desktop app. I do recommend sending that motion file that you've just made, send it to yourself through email. It's actually not that difficult, all you do is go to your email and type in your own email as the recipient. And then go ahead and download the motion file from your email onto your mobile device. And as long as you already have the Pet Toy mobile app, it should go ahead and open up and add that as a new skill button on your mobile device. And then voila, you can use it. If you need help with something, or if you don't understand part of the process of programming your pet toy robot, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments section below this video, or reach out to Pet Toy on their official website. Thank you for watching and have a great day.